It is wonderful to be here with you all. Um, it's really a blessing. And uh, a basic miracle is that I'm 62, so I appreciate the 60s and the 70s before the 80s. <laughs> but I also have real memories in my heart and in my deepest places that I could sit next to my sister up here because I did saline abortions and I scalded the skin of children in the wombs of their mothers by salting them out, irritating the uterus to cause contractions that would spit the baby out often alive and I was taught and you all are prayer people, to put a towel over the bucket with the baby in it. It was the baby bucket, we called it. That's the reality of abortion. So when we talk about it, that's why the enemy can't talk about it. They can't, they talk for 30 minutes and they never use the word. Abortion is not health care. And I'm going to ask somebody, because I am here this morning, Ravens, on this day, because this is the hope. You guys are the people who prayed for conversions like me in medicine. I come here as the president of divine mercy care. I know the mercy of the sacred heart. I know the, the way of Benedict. This is real, folks. This is the future. Is Lucy here, my little seventh grade friend? Could you please come up to the stage, Lucy, while I'm talking. Yeah. Uh, we didn't plan this, and this is not part of my remarks, but this is what Divine Mercy Care is all about. It's about the recruitment and asking you to be faithful in obedience that if the Lord has called you into medicine, my daughter, my sister here, my seventh grade sister, and I'm from New Jersey, so I can say that with all Jersey Shore garbage. Um, she wants to be a midwife. The look. <laughs> we, we, Lucy and myself, need you. We need your prayers, your sacrifice, your fasting. Hey, boys, we need your good work. All those irritations that you had marching and talking and knocking, offer them for us because we're kind of an endangered species. Not only do we have the weapon of the rosary on our side because she and I knelt together in your grotto, which I will never, ever forget. I want to tell you this, this, this. I'm so grateful for the invitation. I've never been to a place where the president of the college hangs around, leads rosaries. Yes, we have, there's great, there's great Catholic universities, the new Douay Reims, sending us back into England to spread the faith. Because medicine is dead. Because we bought the lie of abortion, elective abortion, as good health care. What you have right here and what you do right here, it's no more, yes, Chris, Students for Life have projects for you to absolutely make a difference because we must, on this wonderful day of the joyful mysteries, they're all OBGYN, they're all midwifery. <laughs> this is the visitation. We have, we, this is the Annunciation. I mean this, folks. This is real. And we're going to be asked to go in haste to listen to what my sister, Dr. Hawkins, has to say to us. That elective abortion, the direct and intentional killing of the unborn in the womb of their mothers, is not good medicine. It's not good for women. It's not good for men. Joyful, kind, compassionate, mercy rooted in truth and in the divine. Divine mercy is the answer to this, period. We have a lack of faith. 
I keep running into, oh, let's just go to 17, 15, 6, what, you know, in politics. It's hard because I'm a pro-life doctor. Human life begins at fertilization, at conception. And yet the kid at UVA 12 years ago walked up to me after this incredible medical tour that my friend, Students for Life, Kristen Hawkins, organized at UVA. He walks up. He's a resident, fourth-year resident. This guy was at the end of his OBGYN training. He's at UVA. Dr. John, do you really believe that life, human life, begins at fertilization? You're the first doctor that I have ever come in contact with who said that. And now they want me to pollute the bodies of young boys to become little girls. So we have a lot of work to do with the fall of Roe, and this is the hope. You guys are <laughs> loose, is the future. Yeah, she's the future of medicine because that's why I'm here. For any of you all this weekend, please come up and talk. I need you. I know firsthand because I performed that brutal and bloody murder that we euphemistically call the termination of pregnancy. It's a joke, we, we can't speak about it because abortion is, still remains in the shadows. Abortionists are always back alley. People who wanna do elective abortions, that's why they don't talk about it. So as Kristen's gonna say, use the word abortion. It resonates, language matters. Tearing limbs, poisoning, that's not medicine. It's violence. You are the triumph. This is what the triumph of the hearts look like. All of you. Those guy, that young man I delivered. <laughs> making me feel old. But I want to tell you, to see the people here at Benedictine, yeah. We can do this. There is hope. We can cure that hardness of heart that I had, because that's really what changed me. And then it was a young 30-year-old neonatologist who said, Johnny, stop treating me and giving and treating unborn life as tumors. You have two patients to serve as an OBGYN. Care for both. Never pit mommy against baby. These are the things we're teaching now the next generation. So all of you PAs, nurse practitioners, MDs, any healthcare professional out there, I'm kind of here this weekend because I want to learn from you. I want to celebrate with you. I want to go to mass with you because I believe in Eucharistic medicine that's going to renew the face of the earth. And so once again, on those hills, I met the love and mercy of Jesus Christ and the love of his blessed mother, period. She's the best model because she held him dead and cold in her arms and still yet believed. Because the word of God that was preached to her would come to pass. That's the secret. It's about believing. My sister, Kristen and I go way back. I'm telling you, she has believed this in her soul since the beginning. And I valued it because she was 21 years of age and I was much younger. She got it. So once again, I, we as family, we're not only genetically members of the human family, which I can talk about to medical audiences, but we are his family and we have a mother and they have a sacred and an immaculate heart. And we love scripture and we love our brothers and sisters who are in the word. We need to really build community here, folks, to turn community into communion. I believe that's the core of the message of divine mercy care, especially in medicine. So I'm here till Monday night. I want to listen to you. I want to rest in your arms. So many smiles that have come to me. I'm looking at them right now. My own, I'm a survivor of Roe also because I did them. And you don't know how healing this is. I'm holding on to her because she's my rock. It's not me. It's my wife who believed. It's you all who prayed. It's the young lady in the dark black over there that believed from the beginning, gave her life 
It's the men in black here who gave their life. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, renew medicine, renew the face of the earth. Start here in Atchison. Please, Daddy, do your thing through us. And remember, Ravens, forward, every forward. Thank you and God bless.